All right. Well, good afternoon, Victoria. It's good to good have afternoon. you here in, in, in one of the, the classrooms here at ESA. You graduated when? I graduated in 2014. Okay. And so then what, what happened after you graduated from ESA? After that, I went back to England, which was where I was born. Okay. Um, and I studied at the University of Chester. Okay. I studied German and sports science. Um, I studied sports science because I was always been interested in sports. Good. Yeah. And um, I studied German because I wanted to uh, keep up my German skills that I've learned here mm -hmm. at ESA. Okay. So yeah. German and sport. And then after let's see you were gone for four years five years yeah four okay. years okay um, and then i came back to germany and i didn't really know what i wanted to do um so i knew i needed to work i wanted to practice my german skills okay so i decided to work in a um, shoe shop in city gallery good and that gave me the opportunity to speak german every single day <laughs> and also spontaneously mm -hmm. um, and that's also where I gained more confidence um, in being a leader and okay. taking on more responsibility mm -hmm. which helped to funnel me into teaching. Good, Yeah. good. So how long were you at, at ESA as well? Um, I was at ESA for five years. Okay. Yeah, I came in seventh grade. Okay. What were some of your fondest memories as a student here at ESA? Um, I always remember the camps. Okay. They were always a highlight. Yeah. Every year you knew you were going to go on a camp. Mm -hmm. And we had um, a really special year. I believe it was in grade nine. Okay. Um, where Mr. Italiano said that he would sacrifice his May holiday and take us to Italy on oh. like an additional camp. Wow. And so I remember that being really special yeah. because uh, we had the privilege of going on another <laughs> one um, and doing all the different courses. Like we did canyoning, okay. we cycled around the Gardasee, um, we were in a tent okay. cooking, yeah. camping together. Was it a whole grade level group? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. We always did it as grade level. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it was a nice bonding experience. Very cool. So were there things that you've gone back to now that you're an adult and you said, oh, I remember when I did that back in, in camp way back when? Yeah. Um, a lot of the cycling okay. uh, trips. Um, I think when I was a kid, I didn't realize how uh, much cycling was a big thing here in Germany. Uh -huh. But now it makes sense um, because we did so much in camp and uh, why Germans use it so much in their daily lives as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's exciting. Mm. So you feel like ESA contributed to some of your enjoyment of sport? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was able to try out lots of different sports here at ESA in the, when we had PE okay. every week. Um, and Germany has such a good system anyway for after school clubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was that was really nice to just experiment a little bit. And you had a particular sport, right? I did athletics. Okay. Yeah. And so where did you compete in a, a club? Yeah, I was living in Neusses at the time. Okay. So um, I competed um, in the club in Neusses. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to get a scholarship when I went to university okay. to continue that. Okay. And so which events were you usually running? Um, usually I did high jump and long jump. Okay. And sometimes sprint and hurdles. Ah. Yeah. So people were always asking you to get things way up high on yeah, the shelf. Yeah, exactly. Guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, good, good for you. So back in your time, did they do athletics as part of the sport day? Yes. And did you, were you the shining star there? I did like that. <laughs> I feel like I had an unfair advantage though. Okay. But I do remember going to Tsusamashausen, which is a village near uh -huh. here, and um, doing the sports day okay. and thinking, oh, I was here last weekend doing a competition. Ah, so, good. Yeah. Mr. Jones was telling me that, that they used to do athletics as yeah. part of the sport day. So I wondered <laughs> about that. Well, good. Good. Um, all right. So you studied sport and German mm -hmm. in university and then you came back to Germany. And was it just by chance that that someone said, oh, Victoria is around. Miss Snook is around. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we have her come in and, and help out or, or were um, you actually apply? enough. My mother used to work here. OK. Um, she volunteered That's in the right. library mm -hmm. and she helped out in the sports department because mm -hmm. she's um, an avid um, athletics uh, like coach and she runs a lot mm -hmm. um, and so when uh, they moved back to England she said Victoria I know you've been thinking about a career change <laughs> this is your time Good. Um, I know that Isa would welcome you 
And so that's when I applied and Excellent. I had the opportunity to work here. Oh, exciting. That, that's very cool. Yeah. And so one Miss Snook left and another exactly. arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Family tradition. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. All right. And so then you came in and were you assisting in a classroom or were you assisting in the, the gym, the sport um, teams? Actually both. Okay. So uh, with my background in German and sports science, mm -hmm. I was able to assist in German B classrooms in lower school okay. to get the classroom experience. But then I was also uh, able to help Vienna um, uh -huh. in the PE department. Oh, very yeah. cool. So how is it being an alumni and working here at ESA? It is very interesting because it feels like I'm coming back to my second home. Okay. Because I was so familiar with it as a student. Uh -huh. And now when I say I'm just going to work, I'm going to school, it, it doesn't feel like it's a foreign place. Yeah. Um, because I still have so many memories, especially mm -hmm. being in the, in the upper school. If I ever go to cover in a classroom, I'm like, oh, I was here when I was about 14. <laughs> I sat there yeah. and this person was teaching. <laughs> and so it's nice to have those memories. That's, that's good. Yeah. So it changes the, the parameters just a little bit. Well, good. What about, um, let's see, your... Uh, Oh, I had a question. Your partner is also an alumni. Mm -hmm. And so does he come back every now and then and get a chance to... He does. When we have barbecues, yeah. he's able to come back. Um, and I think it's nice for him. He was with us uh, just in the IB. Okay. So um, he has a different um, mm -hmm. relationship to ESA. Mm -hmm. And so it's nice for him to see that um, I have such a deep connection for the school mm -hmm. um, and that can continue as I work. Mm -hmm. And I think he also sees... Um, teaching is obviously challenging yeah. at times, yeah. but he knows, he's comforted that I am able to do it in such a, a friendly environment like ESA. Good. So it stays within the family, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah, excellent. That's good. Um, all right. Well, then, is it, let's see, what is it like being a teacher? Let's go there, actually. Um, it's very rewarding. Okay. Um, and sometimes the rewarding moments come so spontaneously mm -hmm. that if you were an onlooker you would think that makes sense that's logical you've been teaching this <laughs> but other times it's so surprising and you realize how much potential the students have mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to see their potential in different ways mm -hmm. because it just reminds you how everyone's different and everyone's going to show their difference differences differently mm -hmm. and uh, that's the really nice thing about ESA is that because we have such small classrooms, I'm able to have one-on-one -on -one contact with Good. kids in almost every lesson. Yeah. And so you can really develop them as a person Good. and not just cut and paste mm -hmm. the different skills. Good. So you knew, you know the kids, you know what they're capable of, and you know that you can expect more of them sometimes, or yeah. you can make sure that they get to that level. Yeah. Good. So do you feel like any of your former teachers have become kind of a mentor? to you as a teacher? Definitely. I mean, I worked a lot in the sports department. Okay. And although Mr. Jones, Ben, didn't teach me, uh -huh. um, he was there when I was a student. And so he knows me as that shy, okay. timid girl okay. back then. Yeah. And so I feel like he's been able to to develop my skills mm -hmm. and help me grow professionally Good. Um, and even personally as a person mm -hmm. through PE, mm -hmm. which has been a wonderful experience. He's a wise man. He is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. So, and you've also been doing some like after school activities that you're helping to coach yes. too, right? I help uh, or I run the gym sport okay. for the lower school, good. which is where we mix gymnastics and parkour. Yeah. And then I also have um, helped develop the volleyball fitness ah, um, aspect. Yeah. And you're, you're doing that this afternoon? I am I doing yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> well, good. Um, okay, well, what are some of, maybe this comes back to the camp, but what are some of your favorite traditions here at ESA? I think one that sticks out the most is assemblies. Okay. Regardless of how old you are. Yeah. Um, even the lower school assemblies, when mm -hmm. they're smaller, more intimate, you have the students presenting, mm -hmm. or even just at the end of the year, I always remember the whole school assembly where you got to see all the students yeah. and you could really take a minute to reflect and be like, wow, this is the whole school in one area. Yeah. That doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, yeah, it's a wonderful thing to see. Mm -hmm. Even as a student, 
you always sit in certain areas at different grade levels. Yeah. So as you get older, you think, oh, yes, I'm moving, moving further back. back. <laughs> <laughs> then as a teacher, you get to be all the way yeah. almost out the door. <laughs> yeah, or sitting on the ground yeah, next exactly. to the <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Um, so did you feel like once you left ESA, um, after you graduated, did you feel like you were well prepared for university? I think the IB um, does a phenomenal job in preparing um, students for mm -hmm. further education, mm -hmm. whether that's university or an apprenticeship. Um, it just it gives you the tools to be able to think about multiple perspectives mm -hmm. and to comprehend information and then critically analyze it. Mm -hmm. And especially for me at university, just to simply write essays. Right. to structure your arguments, mm -hmm. to have an opinion or to contradict other opinions mm -hmm. and then to be able to say, OK, this person said it Okay. to reference that. Yeah, that's, that's good. And, yeah. and those are things that you're struggling through as a 12th grader, but you look back on exactly. it later and you think, OK, I get why they were making me do this. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you went to college or university, were you in larger groups of classes or were you still in kind of a small I was small lucky groups. enough to be in quite small classes. Okay. Um, that was one of the reasons I picked Chester mm -hmm. because it had similar uh, similar philosophy as ESA okay. in terms of class sizes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay. And then when you did a lot of your training, you you still had that one on one interaction with the tutor, or uh, how did yeah. that work? Okay. Yeah, I still had the one on one interaction. Mm -hmm. um, that was the nice thing. You got direct feedback. Mm -hmm from the tutor um, and you could still collaborate with mm -hmm. um, with the others in the class. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you find that because of your IB experience, you felt like at least at the beginning that you had a good understanding of what to expect? In university, yeah. yeah. And also when I continue to do my teaching okay. degree, mm -hmm. um, the really nice thing when you are learning to become a teacher is you have to do lots of reflecting, mm -hmm. which you learn is a core skill in the IB. Mm -hmm. You have to critically analyze why you're doing certain skills, Good. what's the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but also because I've had this international education, mm -hmm. um, to then become an international teacher, mm -hmm. I have made so many connections to my experience Good. where if I was in a different school system, I would not have had mm -hmm. that. Did you have a lot of conversations with some of your classmates just about what education was like for you yes. and what they had experienced yeah. and kind of wondered the differences. Yeah, well, I, I didn't realize how rare it was to yeah. uh, be a student and then go back and work there, mm -hmm. um, especially in the international area with so many people moving different places. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I, I've been joking and I don't know that everyone enjoys it, but just at ESA, you can you can be with us from cradle to retirement. <laughs> <laughs> but. We love, we love to have you that long, but I know that we might not keep you forever. <laughs> but um, it's, certainly, it's certainly good having alumni come back because when working with a new staff member and you're trying to share the, the values and the ethos mm -hmm. that we have here at ESA, it's really good to be able to have somebody that already knows that and, and is able to say, oh yeah, from my time, these are my experiences and you can, you can add directly back um, all sorts of new ideas that maybe we as, as staff members don't always even think about. So yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's really exciting to have that. Um, let's see. Well, what are some of the, I'll look on, on the other side of it. What are some of the challenges of, of teaching that you've found? Um, I would say a challenge would be to be able to take a step back and okay. observe, mm -hmm. which is a very important skill. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times uh, it's ingrained in us that when we see something, we have to act mm -hmm. or you have to change something or challenge it. Mm -hmm. And um, especially with students who are still developing as themselves right. and their skills, sometimes we need to observe and mm -hmm. we need to think, what feedback am I going to give that is going to be beneficial mm -hmm. rather than impact them negatively? Mm -hmm. So I think that observation aspect uh, to step back has been something that was challenging. Okay. Yeah. Even sometimes just the power hierarchy that different cultures, and because mm -hmm. we have students from all around the world, view a teacher in a different way. Mm -hmm. And and so it's understanding what's the hierarchy between a teacher and a student, um, and that can have an impact as well. Yeah. So, no, really interesting. Okay. Well, then, well, thank you so much for, you. for the chat today. It was great to hear about your experiences as a student 
but also to have you back as a teacher as well. And I know our students today are benefiting from your own experiences. So I'm glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you.